much runway, does she? What do you want to talk about? Well, I don't know. Let's talk about George. George? George Patterson. Come on, don't play games with me. The rescue chopper came in this morning. They didn't find anything. No wreckage? Nothing. How the hell should I know where he is? You sent him up there. We sent him to Dawson. Never made it near Dawson. He charged gas to Mollico at Telegraph Creek. It's up in the Cassiar, for Christ's sake. I took the last we heard of him. Maybe he crashed. No. I told you they didn't find any wreckage. Give me a float plane, I'll find it for you. I think there's more at stake here than you make out. More than a man's life. to be hard-nosed about this one phone call i could replace you just like that just like that huh? on. well in that case you won't have any trouble replacing me before this bird runs into that hang jesus talk to you now. It's about George. Go ahead. Andrea, will you please open the door? You're gonna wake up the neighbors. Would you mind very much telling me... Did George say anything about where he was going exactly? He didn't tell me a damn thing. We had a fight. What do you want? Malico fired me. I think I know where George is, and I'm not telling him. Do you? He's up in the Cassia. Oh, God. He was supposed to be flying geophysical survey for Marleco. Elliot sent him up to look for porphyry showings. Malibdin him. Look, Gene, if something's happened to him... He didn't crash, Andrew. How do you know I didn't crash? Because I think he found what he was looking for. What? Molybdenum? him? No. Gold. How are you getting up there? Float plane. You don't own a float plane. I do now. I sold my house. <laughs> You'd have to be crazy to get in any kind of airplane you could buy with that house. Well, fortunately, you're not getting in it. What the hell are you looking for? OK, he had a map, an aeronautical chart of northern BC. Why didn't you just say so? 
He used to take it out every night and stare at it. Son of a bitch. Well, it was there the last time I looked. I mean, he must have taken it with him. What do you mean? George doesn't need that map. He knows the country by heart. He just took it so I couldn't follow him. I don't think George would do that to you. He, just, he wouldn't just walk out. I think he did it to both of us, kiddo. I'm going with you. That is an ex-Marley Cove surface suction dredge. No, I mean that. You sold your house for that? It's an airplane, kiddo. That's no airplane. That's a flying coffin. The looks aren't everything. Anyhow, it's how she flies that counts. Give me that. Well, never mind how she flies. I think she's thinking. Float has a little leak. Uh, you just have to pump her out each time. That's okay. It's supposed to come off. Get into it with a float plane if the wind's right. He had it marked on his chart right around here somewhere. If you send the cast here, that's where he'll be. Amazing. I never thought you'd find it. 
anything. Relax. Come on, Jean. This isn't funny. No kidding. Turn it back on. How many landings have you made in a float plane? This will be my third. Your third? Afford any more instruction. Well, that's just great. I knew this would happen. You love this. It must be a fuel pump. I paid good money to get it fixed. Stopping. The hell are you shooting at? Well, I didn't know whether you saw us or not. Well, of course I saw you. You may be old, but I ain't blind. What's the matter with your plane? How'd you know something's the matter with it? Old Indians know things like that. I think it's the fuel pump. I need a ride down river to Wrangell. I gotta fly in a mechanic to take a look at well, it. Well, take a look. I've never seen one of these babies in years. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, what? Hey, uh, you have to be a certified aviation mechanic to, to fix an airplane. You just can't walk in and just uh, take a look. It's an engine, ain't it? I fix my motor. I can fix your plane. This will be easy. You, uh, you from that uh, fish camp downstream? No, I'm from Paris, France. Where you headed? Upstream. What are you doing? Where's your friend? Andrea Spaulding. Hey, you ought to teach her how to shoot. Well, you see, you got a plug fuel line. The guy in Vancouver said it was a fuel pump. Get it fixed. Of course. Yeah, well, it ain't a fuel pump. <laughs> the engine's got to have gas to run, you know. What the hell was plugging up? Just a piece of crap. Bad gas, maybe. Got an energy crisis here. Well, stand there with your thumb up your ass, turn her over.
I don't know what to say exactly. You say something approximate. My name's Elijah. Who the hell are you? Gene Dufresne. What are you going up river for? We're looking for a friend. He, uh... <laughs> you know, it seems like every couple of years we get a whole flood of you guys. What do you mean? Well, I seen the gold dredge in the back of your plane. You know, there's a lot of old place of claims up on Dee's Lake. Nope. We're going all the way to Headwaters. Now, you listen to me. You stay the hell out of that country. Why is that? A lot of good folks go up there and don't come back. About uh, three weeks ago, a fellow from one of the big mining outfits flew in there. What kind of a plane did he have? Well, it was a float plane, a lot like yours. He never came out. Did he say where he was going exactly, or... Uh... Didn't hardly say nothing, just Edward, the same as you. Elijah, what do you think happened to him? I don't think nothing. That's how I got to be this old. Your coffee is about as bad as your gas. Well, I guess maybe I'll see you up, River. Hey, hey, wait a second. Hope you folks find what you're looking for. These fountains keep the secret pretty good. Hey, thanks. We owe you. You owe me nothing. Have a seven.
I could have just kept the nose up, just a few. Listen. What? I'm Gene Dupre, and uh, we had a little trouble with our airplane, so we just... What might your name be, Lassie? Andrea. Just Andrea. Surely you were brought up better, girl. I'm Silas McGee, later than Vernes, later than Rio Marignon, Joe Berg, Belmoral, the Klondike, and presently of the Cassiar, as you can clearly see. How do you do, Andrea? Whatever your name is. Spalding. Andrea Spalding, that's my name. Miss Andrea Spalding. It is my sincere pleasure to make your acquaintance. Master Dupre. Frog name that? Uh, Norman, actually. My ancestors. Uh, never mind. A man's not responsible for who his ancestors slept with. You give big pardon, miss. Ah, I haven't been company in years. You have a cup of coffee. What uh, brings your young people into these godforsaken parts? We're uh, looking for a friend. He was prospecting for a mining outfit a couple of weeks ago. We flew in here this afternoon, but uh, we had a little um, accident on the lake. You're not hurt, are you? No. Can you take us out of here? Good Lord, yes, of course I can. I've got to go down to Telegraph Creek in a day or two for supplies. I'll have room for you in my canoe, if you like. Yes, thank you. You know, I've been a bit of a prospector myself, I have. People do sit down, set yourself down. I haven't that temperament to clean up after myself as I should. But, as I was saying, I did a bit of prospecting in my time. All over the world, you see. But it's here have been these many years. How many years have you been up here? Nine thirty, lad. Doing what? My mining mess. That's what it is, I believe, when a man crawls in a hole before the sun comes up and shinnies down into the slime of the air and drills and blasts and pecks and shovels his way through solid rock in a tunnel hardly big enough to sit up in and then hauls out three or four ton in a bucket and climbs back up to the air after the sun goes down. Have a near seen the light of day? 
Yes, that is mine and is what it is. Yeah, this uh, friend of yours. What would he be prospecting for? If I might ask. Well, let Gold. Gold. Gold, is it? That's lovely stuff. It is. You know what a gold dress right here? But I suppose you know that already. What kind of a mind do you have? My silver, Mr. Dupre. Silver, that's my bread and butter. I've got an ore vein bringing me eight or ten ounces a pound day in, day out. And, of course, there's always the chance of a wee bit of gold. is not chasing the color now and again, you know. Did you work alone? This friend of yours, you're thinking he'd be up in these mountains. Well, he had this map. Map? Ha. A map, is it? <laughs> Everybody's got a map. I've got 40 or 50 of them right here. Every one of them says, here lays the gold, treasure buried here. <laughs> if there was even the smallest flake of gold left in these hundred hills, do you think I'd not be there? Sugar, miss? Oh, please. Oh, watch how you're wasting it there. Comes all the way from Prince Rupert at a dollar a pound. <laughs> Just block for me. What uh, sort of map would that be? Your uh, friend's map. Aeronautical chart. His name is George Patterson, had a 180 on floats. We thought you might have seen him. May it also be he made a strike, and you're looking to take it from him. May that also be the case. It isn't. He just disappeared about a month ago. It's a big wilderness. You're an aviator, Master Dupre. I saw you make that landing on the water this afternoon. Not an easy approach between those peaks. Uh, no, uh... <clears throat> a crosswind. Crosswind. Right. Mr. McGee, do you play the bagpipes? Do you think every Scotsman plays the pipes, Carol? Well, we heard this pipe music when we were coming... Yeah, no such thing. We'll not have that infernal instrument played around here, I can tell you that. Sounds like the wailing of the dead. And in a barren proper without a chimney, you know. Well, uh, we should... Uh... Be getting back, set up camp so soon. No, we really do have to leave. Dinner leave? Don't leave. I was just going up to my diggings, as a matter of fact. Why don't you come along? See the inside workings of a real silver mine. Uh, I've got to blow out a hanging wall stringer. Night? It's nearly 10 o'clock. Yes, 400 foot down. It makes head little matter whether it's night or day or anything in between. the country, looking for the great everlasting source of all the gold been washing down these rubbers for a million years. We met an old Indian down in Dee's Creek. He was dying. We helped him as best we could to ease his passion. Before he died, he gave us the claim to this here mine. The old bastard swore the wars were laid with gold. Just we looked after the trouble. 
You had a long enough rope. Perhaps you could tell me. It was here when we found the mine. Some of these tunnels are near 50 years old. Was we came upon a decent vein of silver. We worked for this season. Pet Ian was blasting out this chamber, what we call a stoop. That hanging wall fell off. Took me three days to get to him. Had to come in through the air shaft there. You have to dig air shafts? Brings fresh air down here. First so we can breathe. Then why is it blocked off? I've been using her for backfill. Place to put the useless rock from a digging. What happened to your partner? He died. This tunnel is no working draft. Well, I followed that cursed vein near thirty years. Tunnel, hide behind the next tunnel rock. Make a love and don't enter into it. I'm on grows old, you know. Don't you worry about this hanging wall. I'll have it sure proper in a day. Mr. McGee, where are 
exactly is the silver vein? Well, you're certain in it. <laughs> did, did you think it was all silver and shiny as you just dig it out with a peck and melt it down for spoons and things? Aye, that's it. Good stuff it is, too. Oh, it takes a steady hand for blasting. What part of the country are you set on prospecting, Mr. Dupre? I said, what part of the country? This part. You can't fool an old sour do that. I can see the want in it. I thought I'd start down at the creeks. Try to follow placer upstream to the load. I tried that myself, you know. Following placer to the load. It don't work. Why's that? It don't work because there ain't no gold. Oh, hey, wait, wait a second. That's not a whole hell lot of fuse you got there. Nearly three minutes, lad. Fuse doesn't come cheap, you know. You can't get out of a tunnel in three minutes. You have no business being in there at all. Put it in. Ah, let's get topside. I can mock this out. It's not safe where you're sitting there, Mr. Dupre. I think you crashed in the wrong lake. Listen, McGee lied about the bagpipes, and I think he lied about George. I wouldn't trust that old guy any further. I'll tell you what else. McGee's not digging silver in that mine. What's he doing then? I don't know yet, but we can find out. We prospect the creek. If there's anything in that creek, it washed out of the mountain. The same mountain the mine is dug in. But so what if there is gold up there? Maybe McGee's being secretive. It's his mine?
Are you alright? A man! There was a man! <gasps> what, 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 what man? McGee? I don't know. It was dark. What did he do? He scared the hell out of me. Was it George? No. Gina told you it was dark. He, he was... I don't know. Something was wrong with him. Come on. Let's get back to camp. Whoever he is, he's gone. in the tank for about half an hour. If I stay down longer, I can fill it up with a cherry can. I got it, Chief. I'm going to try to get under that ledge there. Keep your eye on my air hose. What if it runs out of gas? Don't let it run out of gas.
the hose away. I have to take my mask off to get back in there. There's a hell of a cave going straight back. What do you mean it just stopped? The gas cap got stuck, so I ran back to get the pliers, and it just stopped. But there was gas in the tank. Spark wire came off. I didn't touch it. I mean, I swear I didn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> What are you doing down here? In the cabin. I heard these voices shouting, so I went down to see what was going on. And there was this guy sitting there, like some crazy man. What did he do? Nothing. He just sat there and said something in Gaelic. What's Gaelic? 
brother spoke the Gaelic. He was raised in a wee isle in the Hebrides, named Tianga Nadubherd, the tongue of the Black Cape. My parents died and left him with a family worked a small croft for the laird of the isle. That is like a feudal lord, is the laird. Not my brothers, though. We bit touched, you see. I'll be with him soon, I expect. Where is he now? Well, with his maker. Ian's been dead this 15 years. How'd he die? He was killed, lad, in a cave-in. You said your partner was killed in a cave-in. So I did. And so it was. Alistair Ian McGee was my partner and my brother. He was killed in a cave-in, as I have told you. It's a hard, empty land, Master Dupre. Many a man has come to grief chasing a high-grade vein. How goes your prospecting? Oh, a little color down the creek ways? Uh, we found color in all these streams. Yeah. Well, you never know, though. No. There's always one place you have not looked. I'll be taking the canoe tomorrow afternoon. You see that you're ready to leave. What the hell are you doing up here, McGee? What are you doing, Master Dupre? Where were you? I blasted out 1,600 foot of tunnel, stope, and shaft, and carried the rock out by hand. I've been here 30 years. Let's go, Jane. Master Dupre! You stay the hell out of my mind, laddie. Absolutely I... certain. I'm sorry. Let's leave. Right now. It would take us two weeks to walk out of here. What? Look, there is gold in the creek. There is probably gold in the mine. McGee's had 30 years to find it. Just let me pan out the samples in the morning. If there's anything at all in that or it'll show up. God, what a cold bastard you are. Do you really give a damn about George or me or anything besides that lousy gold? What I didn't find. Which is? Silver. There isn't any silver in McGee's silver ore. And no goddamn gold. What's he mining, then? Gold. Only not in that drift tunnel he showed us. What about George?
as it brings you to call upon a tired old miner, Miss Andrea Spaulding. There's an airplane at the bottom of the lake. It was George Patterson's plane. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that, would you, Miss? Will you have a cup of coffee, Miss? <laughs> I got for your whiskey, but you'd have used up the last of it a month ago. I'll have to go down the mountain to Telegraph Creek, I suppose. Hey! I already told you I know nothing about that. I can I keep a count of every airplane that goes down in these hills? <laughs> you yourself. That plane didn't crash. It was sunk. Deliberately. <laughs> That's me and Ian Lair. Fashion on the aisle. Oh, many a year ago that was. <laughs> In the old lang side. Gene's down in your mind. I know he is, lass. And he thinks that and you're. And I know what he thinks. I'm sorry for him. This country's no place for a bonny lassie like you. Take the man you got and get home with you. While you still can. Exactly alike. I couldn't even tell them apart. It's down here, Andrea. I'm gonna find it. How does he know that? I told him. You really have no idea what's at stake here, do you? Do you?
I found something here. Andrea, stay there.
Morning. Something the matter with your plane? Where's Andrea? There. What? She's dead, Elijah. But he? Dead. Did you kill him? Yes. Did you kill Andrea? Yes. Got a cold in the mornings already. You notice that? Well, McGee. My business to know. Why didn't you tell me? Has it made any difference? <sighs> Probably not. You want that gold awful bad, don't you? I think about that gold, Gene. I think there isn't any. There's always one place you haven't looked. I'll be back this way in a day or two. I'll take you down to Telegraph Street. If you stay alive.
You're not hurt any of that. You listen to what I have to tell you. It weren't me. Go to hell. It was Ian. You said he was dead. So he is. So he is. He's dead, all right, lad. Only it was you that killed him. Ah, didn't you trouble yourself? He was a murderous bastard. Ian believed in the mother load, you see. The old engine who first dug out this mine. My brother killed him for it. Just on that chance of the gold being there. And then, uh, no more than a fortnight or two ago, that uh, geologist chappy you were asking about. Patterson. Uh, Patterson, I he came snooping around here just like you. I told him to clear out. He wouldn't have listened to me. Ian dropped a hanging wall on him, threw the body down the shaft. Ian dug that, you know. 400 foot through solid rock. He knew the gold was there, you see. He knew. When we were getting close, we sunk this shaft and put the cabin on top of it to keep the snipers away. Oh, that is what you are, Master Dupre. <laughs> Sniper. What gold? The mother load. The glory hole, lad. The very source of all the gold been washing down these streams for 10,000 years. Ian killed Patterson for it, and he killed your lovely Andrea for it. Damn his soul. He would have killed you, too, if you had not done him in first. I tried. I tried to warn you. I told you to stay out of the mine. <laughs> Couldn't have very well tell you my baby brother was a murderer, no could I? McGee, there's no gold. Of course there is. Where? In the mine, for the love of God. I was down there. It's nothing but country rock. There's nothing there. Fellas! <laughs> Do you think it's just out in the open so you only have to scrape it off the walls? You're infernal ignorant, if you believe that. No, it's there, all right, only you can't see it. Not yet. Just another few foot of rock to blast away and you'll see it right enough. Now, take a last good nap of that whiskey. We got work to do. Hey, that's the catch. Tunnels full and up. Seepage from the creek. I don't know how much longer I can stay ahead of it. Perhaps a month, and then it floods. I'll give you half, lad. Half. I killed your brother, for Christ's sake. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I only put him out of his misery, lad. We'll say no more about this nasty business. What about Andrea? My God. You're daft. It's the mother load. Do you hear of the richest gold mine in the world? You're daft. Look, there's more gold down there than you've ever dreamt of. And in less than a month, won't nobody be able to get at it because it'll be drowned. I could work it alone, but what with pumping and mucking and what all, I'd be lucky to pull out a third of what the two of us could working together. It's common sense. What makes you think I'm not going to walk out of here right now? I suppose you could. But I didn't think you will. I found this in my diggings. Your lassie must have dropped it. Give it to me. You went into that mine. When you claimed down 400 foot of shaft with a hot sweat running down your back, not knowing whether you'd get out of it or no. Were you thinking about that girl? Or were you thinking about the gold? Mother Lord! The Mother Lord!
Earth was three, score and ten. Boys and men was lost from Grimsby town. From Glasgow to Scarborough, many hundreds more were down. Left our trawlers, their fishing smacks as well. The better night, the battle of the soul. There was masts and yards and broken spars. There was many a heart of sorrow. There was many a heart of suffering. There was many a fine and hearty lad. Before the blast, he told me to hide in the woods. I was sure you'd been killed. What do you mean? Who got you out? Ian. He saved my life. Oh, dear God. What? What's wrong? Pack your gear. Just your sleeping bag and some warm clothes. We're getting out of here. Now? Like this? Damn right. If McGee finds out you're alive, he'll kill us both. No. We can't just leave. What about Ian? I killed him. God. I thought he was McGee. He came up behind me in the cabin. It was dark. And what about the gold? Let her go. And we'll leave. I swear. We'll clear out. We can walk out, all right? I've met you, Chakur. And tell every sniper in the North Country. Nine years I was in the 
for it with Ian hanging on to me like a leech. <sighs> Ian fancied you, he did. May the good Lord have mercy on your soul. <laughs> See you alive, young lady. Yeah, me too. Where'd you come from this time, old man? Just down river. Where are you headed for? Down river. Good. I'll give you a ride on down to Wrangle. Thanks. I'd appreciate that. Hey, uh, find anything back there worth all that trouble? Yes, I did. I think this belongs to you, old man. A lot heavier than I thought it would be. 